Sam Ang Sam. We will uh, post his email in the chat box for you. Now on with the program. Ramon Pagayon Santos belongs to the new and experimental group of Filipino composers. He initially trained in composition and conducting at the University of the Philippines and earned his Master of Music with Distinction and PhD degrees at Indiana University and State University of New York at Buffalo, respectively. He was a full fellow at the summer courses in new music at Darmstadt, Germany, and undertook postgraduate work in ethnomusicology at the University of Illinois under grants from the Ford Foundation and the Asian Cultural Council. In the field of musicology, he has undertaken research not only in Philippine and Asian contemporary music, but also studied Javanese gamelan music and dance and Nan Kwan and engaged in continuing field studies of Philippine traditional music, such as musical repertoire of the Ibaloy, the Mansaka, Bontok, Yakan, and Boholano. His writings have been published in major national and international journals, books, and encyclopedias, such as the Garland Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia of World Music, the Cultural Center of the Philippines Encyclopedia of Philippine Art, Tunugan, Four Essays on Filipino Music, Laon Laon, Perspectives on Transmission and Pedagog Pedagogy of Musical Traditions in Postcolonial Southeast Asia, Vocal Repertoire of the Ibaloy from Kabayan, Modernismo sa Sining Musica, The Musics of the ASEAN, and the New Growth Dictionary of Music and Musicians. He has been invited to give keynote papers, lectures, and seminars and workshops in such countries as Russia, Ireland, the USA, Japan, Korea, People's Republic of China, United Kingdom, Germany, Cambodia, Argentina, Uruguay, Bolivia, Taiwan, Thailand, Singapore, and Vietnam. As cultural administrator and educator, he has organized festivals in the National Music Competition for Young Artists in 1991, 1994, 1997, and 2000, the ASEAN Composers Forum on Traditional Music, the International Rondalia Festivals in 2004, 2007, 2011, 2014, 2015, and 2018, as well as the Gongs and Bamboo Festival in 2013. He has also initiated the Music Theory Workshop and two composers forum at the University of the Philippines. His awards include Life Achievement Award, Phi Kappa Phi UP Chapter, Achievement Award in the Humanities from the National Research Council of the Philippines, Patnubay ng Sining at Kalinangan in the 120th Araw ng Maynila, Knight of the Order of Arts and Letters from the French Ministry of Culture in 1987, Ilaw ng Karunungan, Outstanding Fulbrighter in Music, Philippine American Educational Foundation in 1983. He is currently serving as University Professor Emeritus of the UP and, pres and President of the Musicological Society of the Philippines. He was named National Artist for Music in June 2014. Dr. Santos's lecture this afternoon is pre-recorded, <coughs> excuse me, is pre-recorded, but he is joining us live from Quezon City and will be here to address your questions, which you may type in the Q&A function below. His talk is entitled, Integrities and Identities of Southeast Asian Traditional Performing Arts. Please welcome our first keynote speaker in this conference, Dr. Ramon P. Santos. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, the title of my paper this afternoon uh, is Integrities and Identities in Southeast Asian Traditional Performing Arts. One of the greatest impacts of music as a Western artistic expression on the cultures of Southeast Asia is the emendation of the cultural significance of the different means of human expression. With the introduction of music as a language and concept that was hegemonic in scope and meaning. Moreover, the performances of the different expressive genres, which are their own contextual conditions, have been relocated into new venues like concerts, 
concert halls, and purely musical settings that take away or diminish the true function, meaning, and experiential value of the different expressive genres. The truth is that these belong outside the framework of music, so that the valuation of these forms of expression has been diminished as they have been musicalized and therefore have been subjected to the rigorous process of fitting the highly differentiated elements into the highly limited and exclusive norms of musical discourse. With the recent discovery of other musics from other cultures, the subdiscipline of ethnomusicology has been conceived to cover the study of other musical traditions outside the purview of Western art music. In consequence, the ethnomusicology has become both a bane and a boon on the traditional cultures outside the Western Hemisphere. For one, it has validated the existence of the many individual traditions in a way different from Western music, but at the same time, it has homogenized the different traditions into one category of artistic expression in which analysis of its various aspects have been patterned after Western norms. For example, tonal measurements are not essential to the playing of gongs in village cultures, which draws its efficacy from its power and resonance. The concepts of fixed scales are not important at all in some renditions of pieces, or that the sounds of musical instruments or the voice are merely one of the elements to an integrated and combined executions of a particular composition. The many functions of these expressive practices vary according to their occasions and import, but because Western music thrives in temperament, pitches, scale, and measurements, as well as the audiences, these parameters like intonation, timbre, and tone quality, as well as the listening modes, are imposed on artistic productions that come from other cultures. The wholesale acceptance of Western culture as an emblem of progress and modernity all over Asia spelled not only the suppression and marginalization of ancient cultural practices, both but also the emergence of the hybridized forms of expressive practices outside Europe and North America with varying degrees of accommodation of the different aspects of Western music. Thus, our landscape has been cosmopolitanized with so much musical genre, genres, but at the same time losing some of the most discrete aesthetic values of old and ancient traditions. Let us first talk about aesthetics. Aesthetics is perhaps one area where there is so much difference between music, Western music, and the expressive practices of other cultures. What is aesthetics? While some of the given meanings of aesthetics is the appreciation of beauty as well as taste, refinement, and art, it also means sensitivity, discrimination, and cultural discernment. These last three significations are important in finding the real beauty in every human act. Let us look at some examples where these three are the most significant factors.
What you are seeing here is a rite or ritual where the singers are intoning the life, passion, and death of Jesus Christ during the Holy Week of the Lenten period. It is called pabasa or reading or what we call passion. This practice is all over the Catholic world in the Philippines. What is important here is that the ritual is done regardless of the quality of the voices of the chanters or the singing itself, but the devotion of those who are performing it. Now, would you call this music? Let us look at another. Again, we see here an act of singing, declamation, and gesture movement, together with the interjection of the drum for emphasis. This is, of course, the pansori from Korea, a form of artistic storytelling that dates back in the 18th century, with its length ranging from three to six hours. The word pansori literally means sound where people gather and while there is music or sound involved it hardly conforms to the real meaning of music because primarily it is a storytelling medium these two examples possess their own aesthetic basis in that one is judged by the religious favor fervor of the performers while the other is judged by the beauty of the story, the smooth delivery of the singer, actress, emoter, and the poetic quality of the text. Now, let's talk about form. Another aspect that these expressive traditions differ from the music of the West is form. Form comprises the structure configuration, and shape of a particular discourse because it could also mean the custom, conduct, protocol, or disposition of a distinct practice or expression. In the performance of a Western classical work, for example, there are different parts to a particular composition. You can have a sonata allegro form or a min minuetto or a rondo, and in larger scale, the symphony, concerto, trio, quartet, octet, overture, uh, art song, and a few others. The decorum that is observed by listening to this are complete silence. You cannot even cough or sneeze. No unnecessary movements, and then one has to clap or applaud at the end of the rendition. These parameters are quite different and even the opposite in many forms of expression from the different cultures outside the West. The Indonesian Gam Javanese gamelan, for example, 
has a form that is recurring with the gong aging as final note for each section. The structure is quite flexible in that certain changes may occur when repeating a section since some of the instruments can do some improvisatory passages. Another peculiarity of gamelan music is that the whole performance is directed by a kandang player who is somewhat of a conductor, although he is also a member of the ensemble. In fact, the entire gamelan, while it is composed of different instruments, usually play together all the time as it is a communal, communal instrument. Unlike the symphony orchestra, which has a hierarchy of strings, winds, brasses, and percussion, and sometimes play solo or in small groups, has a conductor, which does not do anything except direct the tempo and the whole feeling of the performance. Another example of a clearly defined form in traditional cultures is the Bayok of the Maranao. The Bayok is a musical oratory which is performed by a single individual, pref preferably a single female. It is an extemporized speech that is sung on a fo any formal occasion, like marriage, the coronation of a datu, a political campaign, or the visit of a dignitary. The Bayok is distinct because the text consists of developing a topic at great length in a hyperbolic level. While the music spe musical speech centers on the occasion, the singer must first extol the Maranao culture and then slowly relate that culture to the present occasion. It therefore requires a great amount of rhetoric on the part of the singers, and then later it moves on to singing some passages from Didarangan, the principal epic of the Maranao culture, which she would have to relate to the occasion at hand. The form is very distinct. It begins with a low tone in vocalist style, then it moves on to the principal text in higher tones, then it goes to the Darangan excerpts, and then the close. When the performance of the Bayok is laudable, the audience usually shows its approval with shouts during the performance itself and sometimes after the performance the men run after the performer to ask for her hand in marriage let us watch an excerpt of a perform performance of the bayok Kaya patay ngedapi pentaran na manis sa tariti babalong eh 
Tanah rompak kaya hadapi hubungan yang mengisah sobi nenggai negawan Ula sana kampah mana kaya pak tayi ngadam Kaki ahli pendedau dan air sarap pemuda sana ang kaya lima ye ngadam Pimpun Allah nabada isah tari tiba benu ina katap tanah kamatan tam Wanawana naya hadapi suda na manisah Kara kata benu e asap kulu wabuli maafin jinak tarai ngadam Asal ia dah samuda nak agi asai mantu nam. Oh bapa kali pati ya kapal puna biar isa. Bantu gana baraya ada kapal puna biar isa. Enga data bulu wana kata wana kapal mana. Karena mahu serana ya mahu dapat kisama. Mahu dapat kisana iman tu nak semua sana saya mari na ya gesam. Lada bariu nanda kian kina upa anak rakata belu ina kamana. Now, let's talk about context. Context is another parameter that differentiates Western music from other expressive traditions, from other cultures. Again, let us look at the possible definitions of context, which could be the framework the circumstance, the setting, to name a few. It therefore means the condition or situation by which a particular action is executed or accomplished. Or it could also mean the reason why a certain activity is performed or presented. In Western music, Context would mean the way people would receive a musical performance. It's important, it's import, message, the general feeling, and impressions. This is why a musical piece is performed to communicate a certain message to the audience by the composer and the performers that cannot be described in one description because it is esoteric and subliminal. In other words, the performance is itself the meaning of the music. In other cultures, however, there is a specific reason why the performance happens and that the appreciation comes in the way that performance is presented. And while the music is usually written out and therefore cannot be changed in its essence, other performative traditions are usually extemporized and there is always a feeling of excitement and anticipation at what cannot be predicted. Let us take, take a look at two examples. The first is called Molam, a vocal genre from Laos and Thailand. The molam is a form of storytelling and the appreciation comes at the way the story unfolds and how it is enacted by the singer with the accompaniment of a can, a kind of mouth organ which is played like a drone. If there are a pair of performers, the female usually sings with body and hand movements while the male half dances also with hand gestures. All these are done in order to enhance the story that is being told. Oh -ho. ของไทยเฮาล่มใส่ซาดเป็นสร้างสารใหญ่ขนาดพระองค์ใส่ซาดสร้างขันติตังแม่นต่อมานขันติตังแม่นต่อมานแล้วมาส
ที่จะตามเรื่องภาษาท่านบันบอนตอนพระบุตรเจ้าลงใส่ว่าสมเวนเป็นศาสตร์เสื้อสร้างเผือกไพศาลบริวารบทนนับมากไม่ไหลลนมีนั่งสร้างมาเหสีทั้งสีเป็นเทพยอดเยี่ยมเทียมคางอยู่บพวางสร้างฮักสร้างเสมอเนตรดวงตาปาฐนานำกันตั้งแต่ข้าวเป็นสร้างทำบุญสร้างสินทานบอประมาทชาติพระองค์เกิดแล้วได้นำใส่ว่าสงกรรมเมื่อนึงนั้นสร้างใหญ่สัตว์ท่านบริวารเป็นกือดอกซื้อแนวนั่งสร้าง Another form of expression is the sail of the yakan from the island of Basilan in southern Philippines. The sail is a form of debate done with singing voices. The voices intone the argumentation between two protagonists, and it can go on for hours. Here again, the context is one of belligerent dialogue, and not really musical. And the circumstance is within the ce celebration or party, where a topic is being discussed in a rather artistic manner. Moreover, the quality of their arguments and the way they are, they are exposed and presented belittle the quality of their voices. Let us look at one example. All the foregoing forms of, express or of artistic expressions have their own intrinsic meaning, significance, and import. I don't think that one can just lump these to the meaning of music or any of the Western concepts of expression. These are forms of expression with their inherent identity as forms of communication or articulations of specific cultures which have their own distinctiveness and uniqueness. If one would amalgamate them to the one category of music and the precepts of music will be imposed on them, chances are that they will lose their own integrity and individuality in assuming the aesthetics of music which are very little represented in all these different renditions. And so, let us not therefore mistake these forms of music as music, because they belong to their own category within the vast field of human expressions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Santos. Uh, first of all, let me apologize for 
the glitch earlier. It turns out I was the only one not hearing the sound. So uh, I don't see any questions. If you have any questions, there's still time to, to type it in in the Q&A. Otherwise, for those of you who are in the panel that I can see in the gallery, just raise your hand if you have a question for Dr. Ramon Santos. Okay, um, there's one from the attendee who's raising a hand that could, uh, from Dulce. Are you able to, to speak on the mic, Dulce? Can you unmute yourself? Yes, uh, Dr. Vern, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Santos, for a very comprehensive and insightful presentation. My question for you is, what, based on the extensive experiences that you've had, what is the top, what are the top three highlights or common thread among the different Asia Pacific uh, ethnolinguistic groups that you have presented? Number one, in terms of the narrative, what, what specific topics? Uh, have there been in terms of the type of songs, the categories, are they uh, pertaining only to rural communities or specifically for the vulnerable groups of society? Or have they transcended to the modern, meaning there is already a hybrid version of the ones that you presented? Okay. Uh, first of all, these are expressions that have their own <clears throat> identities, no? Uh, so that, that's my point here, that uh, I don't want them to, I don't want to lump them into just one category. As you, as you can see in my uh, examples, uh, there, there is a debate, there's a storytelling, there's a, a, a worship, and all that, no? So, uh, I think that that is uh, exactly what they are. And uh, so, uh, I don't know if you can... Well, of course, they are. They have one uh, common uh, uh, qu quality, and that is uh, it's tone. It's sonic, right? It's sonic. It's a sound. That's all. But all the rest are quite different from each other. Uh, I don't know that. Uh, I don't know. I cannot uh, get your uh, 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 your question on the hybridity. Uh, could you repeat that, please? Uh, yes. Okay. My signal is also not good, uh, Doctor Santos. The meaning from the uh, traditional version have there. How have these uh, forms evolved? meaning from the present generation at these well, two to course, three generations well of course they they change somehow you know uh after all culture is uh, not static <laughs> uh it changes somehow uh for example the passion sometimes they use uh pop tunes now you know uh but still Huh? What's that? Anyway, uh, that's my question. That, that's my answer. No, uh, all these things change, but somehow the in the. Uh, internal uh, quality is still there you know uh, I would call that integrity <laughs> their integrities are still there uh, but you cannot call them 
music you know music has a different uh has a different meaning thank you sir um we have a couple more questions but i think we only have uh, time for one more so perhaps i can call on dr rick tremillo who has a question for you uh rick if you can read your own question uh this rick i see him uh, hi ramon can you hear me yes right okay great yeah thank you well the question was uh you're talking about aesthetic which i'm very interested in how electronic electronic technology today how how that has changed or somehow um uh has uh, uh shifted aesthetic and what i'm calling traditional sensibility because i for example i noticed that all the ladies in the pavasa were using microphones and or you know <laughs> staging with lighting uh, all those kinds of things that are electronic uh, you know have they changed changed traditional aesthetic and by how much could you say something yes, about that yes of course uh, i said as i said everything changes no and they they now are using microphones in uh, in uh, reading the the passion and the pabasa no uh, but uh, still i think uh, the the integral part of that uh, uh, exercise still there uh, well of course technology technology actually uh, uh, reinforces uh, the it can reinforce i should say no it doesn't uh, have to be but uh, it can reinforce uh, these practices just like uh, the sail of the yakan you know they they use microphones uh, and uh, all that no uh, i i think uh, even with the with the in incursion of uh, te technology we can still uh, preserve the integrity of this uh, of these uh, practices no thank you can I just add a bit, uh, uh, Vern? Can I add just yeah, one yeah. bit? Uh, yeah, uh, we have just to, a bit of time. We have to move yeah, yeah, yeah. on. Uh, uh, yeah, ahead, Dr. Sanchez's so statement is very important because uh, it it not only goes be it, it goes even beyond the use of microphones. Uh, you could you have you have certain platforms, YouTube, or 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 uh, Spotify. Those those platforms are technologies that can uh, be used to transcend uh, production itself, a tradition, and and I think. It's a it's a whole field of, of uh, inquiry now that we we see the impact of these and 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 it's very I'm very I'm very happy that uh, Dr. Santos mentions or shows these videos with with microphones singing uh, Passion and and, and Isail because it actually is the, the the reality of today that so that's uh, I just wanted to add to 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 his answer there. Thank you. Yes, because uh, the, uh, the 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 masses have somehow incurred uh, uh, their presence no uh, into the uh, into these practices and so you need the uh, electronic technology there you know in uh, in reaching uh, a larger number of people as I said uh, and uh, as Jonas uh, has mentioned uh, the YouTube <laughs> now it's uh, I think it's good. It's a good uh, part of uh, life nowadays, you know. Well, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Santos. Thank you, Jonas, for that. I'm afraid that's all the time we have for the Q&A for our keynote speaker. <laughs>